Right then, let's have a look around the plot. Right then folks, another two weekly tour. I'll just give you a quick tour here. I won't go into much detail because I've got some disasters to report and I'll have a look at my giant marrow and stuff. So anyway, these are my onions, all the wintering onions. Bulbing up now really well and this we've got a good week of weather ahead so they should ripen up and grow a bit bigger. So they were quite good. Garlic's still ticking along, there's about another month or so of growth in that, it's still green, so no need to pull it up yet. Other onions from set, still doing all right, but if you can see, the odd red barren gone to seed, which they always do, I don't know why we bother growing them, because they always go to seed. So that's about it, I've got a few lettuces there and my kale, so now we'll just have a look at the old uh, marrows. So right then folks, this is the giant marrow for this year, I've got one growing here and one up at the other end of the plot. So it's about, what, 12 foot long now, so I'm hoping to start setting some fruit. And these are the fruit you want to be setting. Which is a little, it's got a little, tiny little marrow behind it and a flower at the front of it. Like so, and that's what will grow into the marrow. Unlike these things, which are the male flowers, which are just like your courgettes on a stick. So that's what you need to use to pollinate the female. So what, if I was going to do it myself, hand pollinating it, what I would do, I'm not going to pollinate that one because it's not quite late enough yet. I would take the leaves off that and then you're left with a little, the male part. And then what you do with that is open up the petals of the female one. And there is a female part in there, if you forgive the expression. And you just sort of stick it in and leave it in. And that'll just give it a quick brush about and that'll pollinate it and hopefully grow into a giant marrow. So anyway, I've grown one £54 last year and £53 the year before, so I'm hoping to smash my record and grow £55 an egg this year. So We've only got about six weeks to grow. Once you get one, one fruit set, they're not like pumpkins. So Another thing is, actually, now, before I forget, is once they get to be growing really long, your pumpkins, sorry, your marrows, you can actually bury the main stem like this. There's a main stem under there, and you bury it with soil. And then what happens is, where the leaf joins the main stem underneath, there's a part, there's a part that will actually root down into the soil like so. So not only does it anchor your plant in all the strong winds and stop it blowing about, it'll send a second set of roots out at every leaf joint, and basically provide another, like another 20 or 30 set of roots, so you'll get to much bigger fruit and better results hopefully, that's what all the giant pumpkin growers do, so it's just something that, that works, it looks ridiculous, you'd think it'd rot but it doesn't rot at all, so it's in the lap of the gods now, whether I get a big one or a small one, so that's, a, that's about it for the old uh, marrow this year. Let's have a look at the big disaster now. Yeah. Folks, I've got me a bit of a flower garden, before we go into the polytunnel I'll show you my major disaster, I'll show you stuff that's not looking too bad at the moment. Flowers are up, and this is my sort of wild flower bit, which they're just starting to flower now. So that should be a good old show in a bit. What else have we got? Show potatoes, absolutely humongous now. Absolutely growing like nobody's business. And watering them like something else as well. And then the old uh, black currant bush, which was self seeded by a bird, I think, because it was just right underneath the wall, if you see, right next to it. And that's absolutely full of fruit. So I'll need to net that up because I've got a blackbird actually nesting in the middle of that tree, which will no doubt be eating all my blackcurrants. So I won't go and uh, disturb the blackbird, but I had a look the other day and there was there's a nest in there. Didn't see any chicks or eggs, so it must have just built it. The old white bush has come out, which is attracting loads of bees and stuff now in the morning anyway. So anyway, that's about it for my flower bit. Now we'll go into the old uh, polytunnel and I'll show you my disasters. Right then folks, before we get on to the major disaster, I'll just show you what's actually going well. French beans climbing up and I've been training them up as, again and they're getting really well, doing really well now. Starting to get flowers on now and a few little tiny beans at the bottom. But you see how many flowers there are on and that just, that's just going to happen all the way up. These are the cobra beans, you get an amazing crop. So I should be uh, overrun with beans shortly. And then these squashes and marrows not marrows, butternut squashes, gherkin plant climbing up now, cucumbers, no fruit on yet but uh, they will be shortly. And then onto my show carrots, which are absolutely massive now. 
really chuffed with these huge great leaves on them now so should do well if nothing happens in an adverse way to those it's been that hot watering the hell out of them so likewise the big long ones in the barrels they seem to be doing fantastically so now it's on to the disaster and the disaster is every single one of my show onions by the big giant ones has gone to seed and when I mean gone to seed I mean it's sent a seed head up if I can find one just like that like a little evil lollipop coming right through through the middle so basically that just means that this year's exhibition onions are, sh are absolutely stuffed every single one of them by about three and I don't know why it's never happened to me before in 13 years but every single one and the only ones that haven't I mean giant ones I've got five giant ones and one in a pot there so anyway I'll just get on and we'll pull some of these uh, reject like I say bolts. these in the giant pots these giant ones absolutely huge they're getting massive now but they're fine not one of them is bolted and they're all like that all seven of them but it's just all these all my show ones so I'll just pull one up now just to show you the sort of shape of them see I'm not bothered now they're not they won't do any good if you, even if you just snap the snap the, the flower off once they start bolting that's it so you can see they were a cracking shape they were probably about a pound in weight now and about another six weeks of growing and they'd have been about four or five pound but when the old bolter comes out of the top it's you're stuffed so disappointing to say the least first time it's ever happened don't know why I've kept them well watered but it's just one of those things at least you can eat them so I've got about 31 pound onions to eat now so anyway that's the first harvest of the night we better go outside and harvest a bit more before I forgot way out we've got the, the old courgette in a pot which is flying along so I might as well harvest one of these too I like to harvest them quite small because you get that many there's no point in letting them grow to marrow size because you get sick to death of them so anyway another little harvest for the night I'll just grab another one actually a little another tiny one there because they're all the way up the plant and you can use the flowers if you want to tempura batter them if you're that way inclined so anyway that's the second bit of harvest tonight from the disaster tunnel well, as you can see Got all my great tallest potatoes in the world, so I'm about to pull a pot of charlottes. I'll do that at the end of the video, see what they're like. I've never seen potatoes like this, they're absolutely humongous. So uh, we'll get on and we'll tip one of those out in a, in a minute. And then, first of all, I'm going to just pull a few beetroot now. With my beetroot, we're about ready. Garlic's got about another six weeks to grow and looking well. But the old beetroot that I transplanted from modules for the first time. Is ready to come out. That's one of them. I'm just going to pull the biggest, big, just a few of the biggest ones. And leave the leave the others to get a bit bigger. I'm only doing one. So we'll look. Are there any more big ones? Reasonable sized ones. Another one there. That'll do. So there we go. First beetroot of the year. Wouldn't won any prizes, but uh, it's only for eating. So put that aside, chuck that down over here. Ooh. So, we'll just have a quick look. Look at this. Still recorded. These are my shallots that are from seed, and they're starting to bulb up now. If you can see, getting good. Uh, what else have we got? Second lot of lettuce, thinned out now. That's the first lot. I'll just take one of those in a minute. Broccoli. Starting to bulb up in the middle now. This is at Aquilise. Managed to keep the butterflies out of this bit. But the old cabbages, they've managed to get in there, so... Don't know why. Leeks that I transplanted a while ago, they've all taken. And the peas are finally flowering so we should have a decent crop of peas eventually but it's been really slow going so anyway I'll just go and pull a couple of these lettuces out now I'll get my main man on camera again I'm just going to take one of these icebergs now if you look at the size 
about right I think because if you start leaving them to the hues they just go all yellow in the middle if you take one of this size they're nice and green and crisp so this is my first iceberg of the year just give it a quick chop off give it a few of these old leaves so that's my first one perfect size as far as I'm concerned so that's another lettuce and I'll take another one of these little gems the cost lettuce There you go. Same with this, you just really use the middle bit. Take all these old leaves off. And just eat the sweet heart. So that's a couple of lettuces. A few beetroot. Now we'll go and uh, pull the old potatoes up. See how many we've got, if any. Right then folks, it's time to pull the old first of the outdoor new potatoes. If I can get to it. This is Charlotte. It's just starting to flower, but I had a bit of a root about and I did find an odd potato. So hopefully it's not the only potato in there. I only planted these, I think they were the middle of April, late April, so they've really not been in as long at all. They've only been in about, in about uh, 10, 11 weeks maybe, if that. So it would be quite an early crop for Charlotte. Anyway, here we go again. The moment of truth. Is it a disaster or will it be good? I think that's the one I pulled out when I found it. It looks like it's the, the big one of the pot, but we'll never know. We'll see. We'll have a rip about. It's typical, isn't it? You have a root and you find. Oh, what could be? Let's have a look. No, they're not too bad. Maybe just a touch too small. And a touch on the low number side. No, that's about right. No, there's a few. They don't seem to be very highly cropping. It's got loads and loads of little babies. So I probably should have left them a bit longer, but it doesn't matter. I've got plenty to go at this year. And these are far better than Rocket and Swift and all that. These are French, French variety, really, really waxy. Really yellow flesh. There you go, not the best yield ever, but a couple of pounds I suppose. Better than nothing. Better than uh, buying the old rubbish that's in the shops now and fresh as anything. So that's potatoes. Not as many as I thought, but at least I've got some. So we'll just have a quick look at uh, the old final harvest, I think. There we go, folks. Disastrous onion, but decent crop. A few beetroot, a couple of lettuces, a couple of courgettes, a few potatoes, and a big reject onion. So at least you can eat your rejects. So that's about it, folks, for this week, this two weeks. See you later.